Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. Um, little follow up here on the, the 15 horse <clears throat> that uh, I did the, I just posted a video here a couple days or whatever uh, repairing the recoil. And then uh, some really interesting stuff I find. Um, so also if you remember it had a bad ground wire from the CDI unit. I put a new connector on that, hooked that up, that good spark. Um, then I hooked up the gas, gave the primer bulb a squeeze, gas shoots out everywhere. So the first thing I found was this. That's the fuel connector. And right there is where the nipple's supposed to come out so you can put a hose on it. Well, that was snapped off in the hose right there. Hopefully you can see it's all jagged there. So it didn't, the nipple was broke off in the hose. So it's supposed to have a nipple about like that one. So I, a whole bunch of them, got a good one and put that on there. Then squeeze it and the fuel didn't feel like it was going in the carburetor to me. So I went ahead and took the cover off the fuel pump and it was full of sand. <laughs> well, if that fuel pump's full of sand, I mean, it was blocked so bad that I couldn't get gas into the fuel pump. So the whole fuel pump's probably full of gas. Well, I went ahead and I thought, well, what do I got to lose? I'm going to at least see if it'll fire over or whatnot. <clears throat> Put it in the tank, gave it a pull start or two. It, it starts for a second, dies. Pull the choke, doesn't matter, it'll, it'll die. So all that's going to have to come off. The carburetor, fuel pump, everything, and, uh, and be dissected and looked at. So, but I found other neat little things. Um, so, <clears throat> first found the broke fuel connector. So let me get you over here and show you some of the other neat little things these folks do. Alright, try not to shake you too bad. Alright, so I put a new fuel connector here. I took off this cover right there to the fuel pump and it was full of sand. Can you see all that sand back in there? Here, let me get something. See that? Just full of sand. Just full. So, um, yeah, the fuel pump was full of sand. Then if you look down here, yeah. sand everywhere. <laughs> well, that lets me know how the pull start got broke. They pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled snap until they broke the pull start. Well, before they broke the pull start, probably they thought, well, if we drain the carburetor, um, maybe that'll clean it out good enough. Because you can see, can you see all that sand under there, under the car? I mean, just massive amounts. Just, just the whole thing full of sand everywhere under there. <laughs> so. They thought, well, if we drain the carburetor with that drain screw, we might be able to get it. Get it going. Boy, that drain screw's hard to get at. How are we going to get at that? Yeah. Let's drill us some holes in the side of the cowling. we get that drain screw out of there. Well, I suppose that's one way. All right, so... When I did try and test start it, it wouldn't throttle up. So the cable's probably stiff, but then I found this. Watch this right here. Look right there. Okay. I'm going to attempt to twist the throttle now. You can see they got gookum pucky there, some kind of shoe goo, epoxy, whatever, marine tex. See the brake? Right. 
So I gotta replace that piece. Ain't no biggie. But just interesting little things. So this video is gonna entail more than uh, more than just fixing a broken wire and a recoil. <laughs> and you know who knows what else I I, I might find yet. But uh, right now I've got some fuel pump to take apart, a carburetor to take apart. And basically it means everything I've already repaired and put back on there will need to come off again, which is kind of normal. Like I said, this is a remote engine. Um, so the owner's going to have to spend a little bit because that carburetor, I'm sure, is full of yuck. And then he'll have to buy that piece from me. I'm sure I have a used one. So I'll save him pennies wherever I can, but hey. over here so it's not gonna be some little quick fix the pull start and a broken wire he's got uh, other issues um, so fuel connectors dirty carburetors broken linkages and possibly a brand new fuel pump or a fuel pump kit anyway. So I'll get all the stuff together, get everything apart, and uh, as soon as I get it apart and see what we find inside, I'll film that and we'll go from there. All right, still working on the uh, little 15 horse Johnson and Things are going about the, the way they should. I put a, uh, a longer recoil rope on this one because after putting that in there, so I put a new recoil rope on it and made it about a foot longer. But, like I said, when I looked at the engine and saw all that sand in the cowling and everything around there, I kind of figured what I was going to find. So, pulled everything off of there and I'll show you what we found. All right, so I pulled pulled everything back off, and uh, I'll rinse that out too. But anyway, I got her kind of tore back down. But here's what I found in the carburetor. Yes, that is sand. Yeah. Oh yeah, I thought over it. Yeah. Yeah, she's looking good. <laughs> My engine won't run. Won't why? Well, why? Well, maybe because it you rolled it in the surf. Anyway, I'll get that cleaned up and see if I can get the passages all cleaned up. I haven't even took the top part of it off yet through the uh, low idle chamber and the transitions chamber. I'll find more of that in there. So that's where I'm at. So let me get this thing apart and see what kind of cleaning and what we might need to replace. And then I'll get right back at it. All right, so I took the carb off. And well, as you saw, it was just full of sand. <clears throat> I cleaned it up as best I could, put it in my ultrasonic cleaner, brought it up to heat in there. Um, important thing with this type model, this is the 93 or later Evan Rue Johnson 15 horsepower. <clears throat> they have a plastic top on the carburetor and a plastic float bowl. So if you're using heat, like an ultrasonic cleaner or, or whatnot, don't let these pieces get hot. Don't let the plastic pieces get hot because they'll warp. Um, and that little cover kit for this carburetor is $110. So um, I still got to replace this broken arm. <coughs> part of the, <coughs> excuse my voice, part of the throttle deal that's broken back here in epoxy. Um, I went and got one out of my used stuff. And so I'll be replacing that. But, and also I, I haven't buttoned up the uh, 
air cleaner and stuff because I wanted to make sure everything was going to go well. So I'll give her a quick run and adjust the idle a little better, get rid of that broken throttle linkage piece, and then I'll button it all up and, and do a final on it. So, keep going. Alright everybody, this is a, a wrap up on this little 15. Um, got it all back together. Um, it's been rolled in the surf, obviously. Um, after I replaced the broken linkage arm to forward the magneto, um, it still felt really stiff in the throttle cable here. So I took this all apart, and what I got out of that was that. about oh three tablespoons of nice fine beach sand so I lubed it all up with luber plate 105 really good stuff there so I lubed it cleaned it blew it all out cleaned it so now this turns really nice and you can see the new linkage arm I put in here that's all works really good um, so uh, Boy, <laughs> carburetor's all completely cleaned. Everything's all cleaned up, oiled up, lubed up, ready to go. I put the new uh, gasket, seal gasket, on the bonnet, but that bonnet's going to have to, I'm going to have to wash that out with a water hose because it's just full of sand. So I ain't going to put that back on there right now. No, sir. We're going to wash that out first. So, let me get you lined up, my... Give the old kick a start. the linkage now works really good. There's reverse. Fall. might need to fine-tune that carburetor just a little bit um, but like I said I gotta wash this this bonnet out it's, it's just full of sand and um, I put it on there just to make sure the gasket repair I did was gonna fit nice seal nice and still be able to get the latch on and it did and then when I pulled it back off there was sand all over it again so I'll wash that out with a hose several times and either that or I'll just sell him a new one either one but uh, Anyway, this is a typical remote Alaskan motor that gets taken out in the bush, 
in the bow of a skiff or in the belly of a float plane, gets thrown on a raft, guys deer hunting, bear hunting, whatever they're doing, goat hunting, they get flipped upside down in the raft in the surf trying to get back to the beach, the engine sucks in a bunch of water, sand and everything, and then they come see me, and so we'll do him up a bill, and uh, but she should be good till the next tumble. Thanks for watching.